Where, where's that 40 percent going to come from? That's the biggest question. <laughs> it's a million dollar question, right? So um, we actually have uh, Apple earning almost close to like a little over six bucks in earnings next year. And a lot of it is actually driven by mostly actually, I would say, a slightly down iPhone units, but also modest growth in services, and then some buyback actually helping, uh, you know, earnings grow next year, despite sales being kind of like flat to maybe even slightly down. But I think, and then on that, you put like, you know, we put a 30 times earnings multiple, basically giving a low 20s for the hardware business and a high 30s for the more recurring revenue like services business. Hmm. You think the iPhone is, is doing better than some other people w would suggest? I mean, you raised your own shipment numbers for this quarter. That's right. That's right. So what you've seen is a weakening in the overall smartphone ecosystem. But most of the weakness has actually happened more on the Android side, not the iOS side. We've seen weakness in China from Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, the OBX categories. We also some weakness in Samsung, most of them from the cost sensitive areas. And app, actually iPhone, which is more a premium phone, has actually held up uh, surprisingly well. We're reminded again uh, this week, you know, we've been talking about the casino stocks today because of what's taking place in Macau. So we're reminded again about COVID and the threat that it is going to continue to have. Uh, obviously, Apple relies heavily on China. How much of an issue is that? Are you, are you taking that into account enough? Yes. Um, you know, I think uh, you've seen like there are two, two parts of the equation, right? One is obviously COVID uh, costs, supply chain restrictions or issues. The other one is obviously the Shanghai-related China's lockdown. I would say that they kind of gave a range of four to eight billion. What I would say is that actually until yesterday, we actually had June quarter down 1% year over year, modestly raises to up 1% year over year now because slightly better iPhone dynamics so far in the quarter. Um, to your point, uh, the COVID resurgence is always uh, something to worry about, something to keep your eyes and ears open to. As long as we didn't have like a drastic lockdown that we saw in Shanghai in the early part of the Q2, I think things should be fine. But at the same point, something we monitor. But so far, I would say nothing to really worry about yet. Mm. Your, your fellow analyst over at Morgan Stanley, Katie Huberty, uh, really seemed to reset expectations for the services business for, for this quarter and, and maybe subsequent ones, too. Uh, when she put out that note, and at this point, I was three, four weeks ago, uh, do you share some of the same concerns that, that maybe a slowdown in the App Store is going to have a, a more dramatic impact in the services business, at least in terms of, of where growth uh, had been expected to be? So, you know, the first and foremost, I would say, like, you know, the Apple service business is not a single revenue line item. That's how they actually, like, you know, uh, give you the numbers. But it's actually multiple businesses or multiple verticals within services, you know, like you said, you have the App Store, you have the Apple Pay, Apple Care, Music, um, the, the Google uh, tag, the traffic acquisition costs they get. So there's multiple different line items. Uh, what I would probably say is that what I do worry about is if we do run into a recession scenario and actually the hardware sales slows down, that definitely has a knock-on effect on services. Uh, obviously, fewer iPhones means fewer related services, whether it's Apple Care app and things like that. So I do worry about that. But I would say as of now, um, the services still holds up pretty well. I think typically June quarter from an overall revenue standpoint is a low watermark for Apple set because that's usually when they also flush the iPhone for a new product launch in September or so. And September mm -hmm. sequentially grows. So we do expect a similar dynamic. I think services is fine. I do worry about it if and when we do go into a recession where, like we said earlier on, um, we are seeing slowdown in the more cost sensitive part of the market, but the more premium phones are still holding up. I do worry that if that starts slowing down, uh, that might have a knock on effect on services. Let me ask you quickly before we go, what, what does a recession price on Apple look like? If it's, if it's 144 today and you're as optimistic as you are, what's the, what's the downside case in terms of price? Yeah, I mean, I would probably say that, you know, um, based on analysis, if you try to do like, you know, like a down 10 percent scenario, you're probably looking at around one hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, if you're like super bearish, you know, I've spoken to some investors who are more in the much more bearish camp. Um, those numbers are anywhere from 80 to 100 dollars. Uh, but in our case, it's probably more 120, but it depends on how severe the recession is, maybe 100, 120. But the most bearish number I heard, it's actually more like 80 to 100 bucks. Yeah, that, that's the most bearish uh, ones that I've heard, too. Uh, and yours is uh, well above that. I appreciate your time so much. I'll see you soon. That's Chris Sankar joining us today.